Hello and thank you for joining me on my video series installing and configuring IBM Domino 9 Social Edition on CentOS 6 64-bit Linux. I'm also covering some 32-bit stuff. Uh, I am your host, Devin Olson, and this is part nine, Sticky Bits. Okay, um, Sticky Bits, what's the best way to deal with that? Um, when your Domino server attempts to start any service, it needs to bind to a socket or a port. It does this by invoking the bind sock program, B-I-N-D-S-O-C-K. Uh, there's a problem with the installation and setup of an IBM Domino 9 server in the current version in that it doesn't set the sticky bit on the bind sock program file. What this means is, well, let me see here. In a Linux environment, a sticky bit is something that causes an executable file to be run using the credentials of the file owner instead of the invoking user. If you recall, previously I talked about how everything is a file and I talked about how um, everybody has to have certain rights and you have different user accounts that have different rights to different things and that's what the, the sticky bit helps us deal with. <clears throat> it allows us to run a program um, as say, for instance, the user um, nodes and I can run the program using the credentials of the root user um, or any other user if I've set the sticky bit according, accordingly. The proper term for this is uh, set user identification tribute. Everybody calls it sticky bit. That's just the term. Okay. And what this means is, is, is for bind sock, in order to connect and bind to a socket, uh, one of the rules for the bind sock program is it must be run using root user's credentials. But um, we don't run our domino <coughs> executable under the root user. We run our domino executable under the user account that we created for it, in this case, notes. So we need to have the sticky bit set for BindSock. Um, if we were to try and start domino right now, we'll get all kinds of problems. Uh, we'll, we'll discover problems with HTTP. We'll discover problems with um, SMTP and stuff like that. And sometimes those problems um, are misdiagnosed. People will go wildly chasing, looking for other services or other issues or, or kind, of, kind of things. That's one of the reasons we actually killed the Postfix uh, service, not because it's, it's a wild or misdiagnosis, but because it interferes with the port 25. Um, but in this case, if we were to try and start it, we'll, we will see issues with our HTTP service. Um, so what we need to do is we need to correct this problem. Now, hopefully they will uh, address this in, in future releases of Domino, but if, if not, it's not a big deal. It's really, really easy to fix. So here we are, we're gonna go ahead and, and fix it. Um, I need to change to super user. Um, by the way, looking at my screen here, this is right, this is the console immediately after having run the um, Domino remote server setup program on the Windows client and when I clicked yes to shut down the, the listener this is exactly what the server console did. It shut down the listener and it came through. So let me type in my password. I think I screwed that up. Yep. Try this again. Okay, so now I'm in as a super user and I need to uh, change to the correct root directory. Um, uh, IBM Domino. This is the programming directory. Okay, and now what I can do <coughs> is I'm going to use the Lotus, or excuse me, the, the Linux find command to search for my bind sock file. So find, and I want to find by name. And the name I want to look for is Bindsock. And that's where it is. You'll see it gave me the directory. The Bindsock uh, program can be found in Notes uh, 9000 Linux Bindsock. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, change to that directory. Oops. I'll leave that. See, Notes. thousand and Linux using the tab to get there. So now I'm there and now I've changed that directory. Now I'm going to list out 
the bind sock program, we can use the minus L parameter. And this tells me about the bind sock program, and, and, and what I want to talk about a little bit is that first column all the way over to the left, the minus R space minus SR minus XR, that. Um, that's a block that, that tells me what's going on, and then you'll see the next uh, chunk says root, and the next chunk says bin, etc. So what this tells me is that the bind sock file, it's owned by the root user, that's where that first the column that says root is, and um, it's also owned by the bin group. Okay, and the block of text at the very beginning that tells me what type and permissions there are for the for the for the entry. The very first character, that minus sign, it tells me the type of entry. Minus sign in this case indicates a normal file. There's a bunch of other things with different meanings, like a D for a directory or a B for a block device, but right now we don't really care about that. All we care about is that first minus. This is a regular file. The next bit of information are those, the, there's three sub-blocks of three characters apiece, okay? So you like, you'll see the, <coughs> the R and the minus and the S, and the R and the minus and the X, and the R and the minus and the X. And there's, there, it's kind of hard to differentiate what is what, but it's just three groups of three, and each, each subgroup has the same rules. Um, they tell me the permissions, um, for read, for write, and execute. So the and so like like they're in that first group, R space S. Okay. And then the next one, uh, R or not space, R minus X, and then the next one, R minus X. Okay, those are read and write and execute, that kind of thing. The S denotes a set user identification tribute. I'll explain that in a minute. That's the sticky bit that we're gonna care about. The, the, the blocks, the order in which the blocks appear are important. The first sub-block is for the owner of the file, and the second is for the group, and the third is for everybody else. So what this means here is looking right here at this file, this bind sock file, uh, minus, or, or excuse me, the first subgroup for the owner. The owner can read it. Um, they're not writing to it. Uh, can they execute it? Yes, they can, but using the sticky bit. The second block is for the group, and that says they can read it. Uh, they can't write to it, but they can execute it. Okay. And the third group block is for tells us that everybody else can read it, and they can't write to it, but they can execute it. The problem here is because that first block uh, with the S is set to sticky bit, set to set user identification tribute. So what we need to do is we need to modify this um, setting so that the group and people, so that everybody else, the third group, can run as the user and the group that owns this file. And this is where the problem comes in because the group setting doesn't have a sticky bit set. And notice again, the owner read for R minus, no, they're not allowed to, to, to write S sticky bit, okay? The next group, read, great, minus, no write, X, says that that group can execute, but nobody else can do this because we have the sticky bit set. So we need to set the sticky bit here, this set user identification for you. And it's ridiculously easy. Now, if you don't understand what I've said, it's probably because I haven't explained it correctly or clearly enough, but we're not going to worry about that. I'm just going to show you how to fix it, and it's really easy. We're going to fix it with the chmod program. Um, so, or, <coughs> excuse me, with the chmod utility. So chmod, okay, plus s. Please add a sticky bit or a set user identification tribute to BindSock. Yay. Now I list it again, ls uh, minus l bind sock, and you'll notice it's now changed. The second block is now a r minus s, and that is what I needed to do in order to make bind sock work. It's pretty much that simple. So I'm going to go ahead and exit. Actually not. I'm going to reboot my server. up here in 
in just a second. And there we are, and I'm going to go ahead and log in. And I'm logging in as my notes user. Password. Okay, and here's the test. We're going to change to local. Domino data, and we're going to run opt IBM domino bin server. Dun, 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 dun. Here's the big test. Does it work? After all the craziness and entering and edits and custom stuff and installation things that we've done, is it going to work? Well, let's see. Looks to me like the server's up and running. Looks to me like everything is starting. Uh, does it work? Well, let's find out. Looks to me like HTTP is started. Looks to me like there's no errors going on. Can we touch it? 10.211.55. And this one is 14, if you recall. Look at that. Server's up and running. All right. Yay. Time to celebrate. Uh, you have successfully installed um, your IBM Lotus Domino. Um, so happy. It's kind of a letdown meaning the series is over. It's that simple. Uh, I might get around to doing a bonus video, meaning I might get around to actually adding Traveler to this Domino server um, and doing a video on that. I'm not, I'm not going to promise it. Just kind of a teaser. Jingly jingly out there. Um, thank you again very much for joining me. I, re I, I really appreciate that, you, that, you're, that you're watching this and, and learning from me. Uh, you can go to my website, learningxpages.com, to read about my journey learning XPages development, um, traveling, changing to that from a traditional notes developer. You can read my blatherings at devinoldson.net, or you can go to www.notesin9.com to check out my buddy David Leedy's website, where he's got all kinds of cool videos on notes development. Once again, I am your host, Devin Olson, and I thank you very much for joining me.